Welcome back everybody to my Astro Dude YouTube video channel for Pix Insight. Um, the last 12 installments, everybody will remember that I did um, a series on how to start for absolute beginners. And a lot of people responded with some very good comments and I enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Um, and this time around, I'm going to do a, a second series and it's going to fall under intermediate beginners series if you wish uh, so you're still a beginner but you've gone through all 12 videos and you find well that was fun and it, I got some really nice images out of it thank you um, but is there anything else we can do and there's thousands and thousands of things that we can do especially with Pix Insight but in the intermediate series for beginners uh, I'm going to show little extra things um, <clears throat> and without bringing any spoilers I'll just make one video at a time and I'll go through the different modules. Uh, but before I get started on that, I just want to mention something about my, my tripod. My Celestron AVX has more or less bit the dust, and so I don't have a tripod anymore. Uh, something to do with uh, PixInsight. Uh, not, <laughs> I'm thinking about PixInsight, but what I wanted to say was PHD2 uh, no longer can calibrate the deck. Uh, and I get a message saying there's something very bad with your backlash or your backlash compensation is not set or there's a faulty USB cable and uh, a whole bunch of other little messages that keep coming up so it'll go in right ascension east west and then it'll go north but it can't come back south at all and of course I've been at this for years and years and years so please don't <clears throat> please don't comment on what the repair should be on the AVX just I'm just letting you guys know that I won't be imaging for quite a bit because I'm on disability. I don't make that kind of money. I certainly cannot buy another mount. We're looking at 1200 Canadian. Um, there's a possibility it could be sent out to be repaired. For that, I'll have to save a whack of money. But anyways, we'll talk about that at the end of the video. So right now, let's get started on um, this part one. Part one is going to talk about one-shot color. Remember the green cast that we get? I'm going to open uh, NGC 7000. Does this look familiar? Well, it should, because if you're using one shot color and it's RGGB, then you know that the, the GG stands for green, green. So there's going to be a heavy cast in green normally. Now, this green usually comes up if you're using flats that are made by the sun. So dust to dawn flats as the sun goes down or as the sun comes up. And it also is a nice green where you're using a, a professional L luminescence panel. Um, and that works fine. What I was showing in my other videos is I had a, bought a drafting board. And that drafting board was not a real panel in terms of the light coming off the panel. And I don't want to spend too much time on that because that's another subject. But here's what happens when you use a drafting board from Amazon, eBay, or Michaels. You get this bright red and some of my friends students because i teach across the world in britain uk in canada united states uh we're saying mitch we we're using a drafting board like you bought there for 25 dollars or 50 bucks or 100 bucks and it's just a heavy red red cast or very p hard purple or really deep blue uh what's going on i go well at first, we were trying to troubleshoot if the flats weren't taking properly or if there was light creeping in or whatever. And we found out that overall is that those LCD tracing panels, LEDs, they do not emit white light like the sun. That stands to reason. And again, not going to get into why. Just that's the way they put out the light. And the camera picks up the red more than the blue and the green. So your flats turn out horrible. This is an example. And I've had a lot worse when they were bright, bright red. We could barely see the horse head nebula so i'm going to minimize that for that because i want to continue on this and we'll deal with m13 in a minute but let's look at mgc 7000 now normally what i've been showing you guys is you you've done all your work and you've gone to the crop and you've cropped the edges that are pretty bad uh, in terms of heavy dithering and then we would play with dbe possibly or we go to automatic background extraction and remove the green cast. I'm going to do it real quick. Um, just going to select subtract. I'm going to drop it on there. 
and I should get two frames, the actual new one, and now we're going to have this green cast. I'm going to screen transfer function it, or I call it nuke it, and look, you can see all the green, and if you could double nuke it, it gets even brighter, and that's what we want. We actually want to remove one of the G's, so we just get RGB, not RGGB, or in some other cameras like the ZWASI, it's more like RGBG, which doesn't matter. It's just a function of the way the cells are covered with the little cover. Uh, sorry, <laughs> got rid of that. Uh, the way that they, they put the, the Bayer matrix over top of individual pixels. So let's nuke that, and there's a the result. And that's what we want, isn't it? Don't we want the big green cast to be gone and bring all those nice colors? Like the, the NGC is kind of a pink, and we have the darker lanes in front of the pelican. And that's good. I mean, that was the idea. But what if there was another way to do this? And I might call it a better way, and there's probably 10 ways to do it. Um, should we try that? Sure, why not? If it's going to improve it a little bit. So I'm just going to close this for a second. Uh, I'm going to go to window number two. And here's a result of me using just dynamic background extraction, putting all the points everywhere and making sure the points are not over top of stars. And it's really hard here because there's so many stars. I mean, there's so many stars. PixInsight won't find an empty spot. It'll bump on stars. You guys know what to do from there. You know to move over the uh, squares because I showed you. But that's not my point here. My point is I can't believe how dynamic background extraction ripped pixels out of this to get the green cast out and left me with an RGB. I mean, that is really, really rough. Yes, I know there's a bit of walking pixels, but again, the point of the video is, can is this the best we can do with dynamic background extraction or automatic background extraction, which I just showed you there? Let's go back to window number one, which is the yellow one. I mean, is this what it does? If it does, I don't want you guys to learn this. I want you to learn a better way. Now, if you pull back a lot, like this, it looks okay. Ignore the amp glow and all that other stuff. That's not the purpose here. So let's close automatic background extraction, reopen our beautiful Nebula, North American. It's okay. It doesn't have a lot of integration, but that's not the point. Let's continue. What if we could change the green cast <clears throat> in a better way and get a nicer, smoother, not noisy image? Well, that's what I'm going to try to show you guys. So I want you to do this. I want you to open up process, go to channel management and fire up two icons, channel combination, channel extraction. Now I've done it because here's extraction and here's combination. Also open linear fit, go to process, all process. You know how I am in, in here, I get lost. Linear fit, it's not have to, it's already open, so I won't open it twice. So here's what we're going to do. I'll, I'll kind of just explain it for about 10, 15 seconds in it, and then I'll actually show you, which takes a little bit longer. So I'm going to extract RGB from this combined frame of one shot color. So channel extraction, I'm going to separate the channels RGB, and then I'm going to choose the red channel only, and I'm going to use linear fit to correct the blue and the green so that the blue, the green, and the red e even out, equal out, average out, and you'll see what happens. When I'm done with linear fit, we're going to go back to channel combination, and we're going to re, re let me reset that, that's cheating, and we're going to recombine to make one channel. Let's go back to extraction. Okay, we're good there. Okay, so let's do those three steps. At least let's start with that, and let's see what the output is of the last frame the recombined RGB, and then we're going to compare it to Windows number two, which is the old way of using ABE dynamic background extraction or automatic. So let's get started on that. What you guys I would like you to do is take your channel extraction, open it up, leave everything by default, and just drag the triangle onto NGC 7000 or your target. Okay, so minimize that out of the way. Again, minimize the uh, nebula. 7,000, North American Nebula, and look at your frames, B, G, R, or the other way around, R, G, B. Now bring red up, nuke it, bring green up, nuke it, bring blue up, nuke it, and there's your colors separated 
using PixInsight. Now, if you look at the blue, you look at the green, you look at the red, there's one thing I noticed right away is that each channel seems to have more or less information. The green, well, you can still see the nebula and you see the background here, and the blue, it's okay too. It's got a little bit, but notice that in space, there's a little, not that much blue and not that much green unless you're dealing with the Eskimo Nebula or the Orion. In this case, North American Nebula is kind of a nice bright pink or hydrogen alpha red. But I noticed that around the Pelican, it's nice and dark. The dark lanes really stand out more than in the green. And that's okay because this lesson is not about that. But I did want to bring it out, even if it's a 45-minute video. Hopefully, it won't be that long. So what are we trying to do? And I talk a lot. So because red is farther to the left on the histogram in a complete one-shot color, and green is really exposed to the right, which is brighter because it's two, two Gs in RGGB, and blue stands out in the middle. So it's kind of neutral. How can we prove that? Because it's important to know this, if you're going to be dealing with this later, then red will certainly not be your, your priority target to correct blue and green or to remove the green cast. So I want you to know that. So I'm going to go, I'm going to say it again. Red is further left and I'll prove it in a minute. And blue is neutral and green's way to the right because there's two green uh, covers, a little lensing on top of the matrix. So let's open up curves and hit the little check mark so you can track the view. Oh, let me close that for a second. You can't track view if you're not in a colored frame. Okay, let's do it again. That's what I like about me. I can make boo-boos and get away with it. All right, so let's look at curves. Let's track view, and that's what I want to show you. So you notice the green is towards the right of the histogram or brighter as you go towards 255, and the red, in this case it's a little bit off pink, is more to the left or zero. And blue, which is kind of a light greenish pale blue, which is not actually blue, uh, is center. It's hidden behind the rest of the RGB. That's our proof. The one on the left, always, whatever that color is, it's the milder color. That's going to be the target, the frame we're going to use to correct the green and the blue. A lot of talk. Let's do it. So minimize this out of the way so we can deal with RGB. Remember, R was to the left, so it's our frame that we want to use as a reference to correct blue, green. Mostly green, but it will be green. So let's put red out of the way, but don't close it. Only minimize it. And remember, this is the red you're going to be using. So I'll put it up here. Now we're going to use linear fit. There's the module. Okay, so red is the target to correct blue and green. So what do we do? Let's use the reference image, red. Let's go to the little window. You guys know how to do this now. You've watched all my videos. So let's go for R, linear 7000 R, right up here. All right, now we're going to correct green and blue independently. First, the green. Grab the red reference, drop it on the green, give it a second. All right, pitch black, nuke it. Back to normal. Bring the blue to the front. Drop the red linear fit on the blue channel. Wait a second. Or 10 seconds, depending on your computer speed. Nuke it. Back to neutral. So there's our green. There's our blue. A reopen red. And red was our reference point. Okay, basically we've, you haven't seen it yet, but we've adjusted all three colors evenly. Close or minimize your linear fit. Back into the top here. So next we have to, well, this is no good. Well, good's three black images. Sorry, black. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> what are good three gray images or mono we want to combine? And here comes channel combination. So in cha channel combination, we're going to reorganize RGB to a single image. So we'll have to look at the channels, RGB, and the sources will be R, now watch what happens when I hit the little window and go get the R. I didn't select it. PixInsight did. How? 
it knew that R stood for red and it automatically inserted it. You know that if it doesn't because your names, if your names don't start with R, you'll have to choose the red channel. Don't forget to choose the right channel. Right is red, blue is blue, green is green. But PixInsight knew that. Why? Because if I double click here, sorry, I can't do that. I'll just say okay. If I double click here, it ends with a capital R. And if I go to blue and I double click here, it ends with a capital B. Isn't that great? Let's go back to R. Let's say that this says uh, Trifid Nebula took it, taken with my uh, attic or whatever, ZW or Altair Astro. Yada, yada, but doesn't actually end with R. Some people, when they are doing their pictures, they actually you could actually rename this rename this to Triffid R, Triffid B, Triffid G. So you'll have the proper. But PixInsight did that automatically in the extraction. Let's keep going. So channel combination R was automatically chosen because PixInsight knows it's red. Now it'll automatically choose the green, which you know, the letters beside it R R R G G, and guess what? Blue. It picks up the blue automatically. Now at this point, don't use the triangle. That's for a single frame. Don't use the square because that's for, again, one single sub. You need to go global. We want to recombine RGB to one color. So I'm going to hit it. I really hope it works. If it does, we have a single image. Recombine. Minimize channel combination out of the way. And let's screen transfer function this. And for those who are new and just watching this and skipped to my other ones, you can go to STF or screen transfer like this. And you can hit the nuclear button. And if all intents and purposes, you should have a nice color that's recombined, properly adjusted. I'll close that. If you're not sure, then you can just undo and hit your button at the top. Redo. There it is. So let's close red. Let's close blue. Yep, don't need it. Let's close green. Don't need it. And we're going to keep NGC 7000 over here as a recombined extracted linear fit image. Now, here's my point. Let's go to this image. That was a dynamic background extraction. Let's right click. Workspace number one, it's gone. Where? Back to number one. Now they're both here. For those who are new, it's a little trick. Some people don't use two windows. I like to hide one on the side and the other. So what's the difference here in terms of quality of extraction of the GG? Green, green, R, G, G, B. The one thing I noticed right off the bat, if I look at these two images without doing anything else, is that this one, and you probably won't see that on YouTube, but this one um, is way, way smoother. Wow, let's prove it. Let's go to the one that's was uh, dynamic background extracted. Go plus, plus, plus. Move it over into the, the seam of the uh, Tampa Bay, Florida area. Let's go to the new linear fit, plus, plus, plus. Let's move it over here. Make sure we're close to... <clears throat> They're almost identical and stop there and look at this one and look at this one on the right and the one on the left. And this is almost destroyed from dynamic background extraction. I mean, it's horrible. And look at the linear fit channel extraction recombination. It is really smooth. I mean, all the detail was maintained and I was shocked when I did it the first time uh, I have Warren Keller's Picks Insight books, 500 pages. And I'm like, whoa, when I read that, I'm like, yeah, that, that's really going to work. And I, then when I did it, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't think I'm going to ever go back to DBE, but don't get me wrong. There may be an instance where this, this will always work, but maybe I need to go to ABE for a divided vignette, which I'll show later. That's another inter, uh, intermediate video for you guys that are have had fun with part one to part 12 and now you want to start part one to part maybe six for intermediate i i don't know how many i'm going to make so back to our work space this is horrible um and yeah if you zoom out it's okay but then if you zoom out here it's like wow it's almost like he already did a whole bunch of work but i didn't do anything all i did was get that green cast now point number two this one i can still see a lot of green 
And this one, even though the Milky Way is kind of a yellowish, greenish, uh, you know, the cloud. Uh, oh, no. I mean, you can see all the green up here. And it's gone here. I mean, I can see the Pelican Nebula. And this is not. I mean, this is, I think this was 10 frames, like 60 seconds. So, but let's not talk about the integration. Let's look at the awesome results. I mean, it's just, it's nice. Let's swatch over a bit. Um, this is kind of chunky or grainy, and that's nice. Okay. So, um, for all intents and purposes, I'm not even going to save these because I showed you something I think is new and I think hopefully it's going to be fun to use. So, what did we learn? We learned that you can open up one of your Greencast colors, one shot color. You can extract RGB. You can minimize this out of the way so you can work with it. Open up linear fit. Choose only the red channel based on curves. If you select this again and you go curves and you select track the view, red is soft, green is hard. We want to use a softer channel, softest, it's probably not the right word for it, lighter, much less impressed uh, upon the pixels will be red. And that's the one we're choosing as a reference frame to correct green, blue. And finally, you guys, I showed you how to recombine your channels. Automatically, PixInsight will pick up RGB if it's the last letter. I don't sure if it's caps or not, but it doesn't matter. So last letter and recombine using global, apply global. Um, and wow, look at the, oh, I didn't do it now. I deleted it, but you guys saw the result. So minimize, 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 and we'll just minimize that. I'm going to right click move to workspace number two which i've called sub noise reduction subs and we're not going to do that so now hopefully that videos are probably been like this is gonna be an hour long hopefully you don't mind uh now look at our m13 for all intents and purposes again it's got a heavy red cast not green but it was caused by my lcd light panel uh with a with a t-shirt so i had the t-shirt on first the panel after I shot 60, 50, 40 flats at uh, 0 0.33 second milliseconds, and I got this. Well, that's the light that the panel projected. Had this been sunlight, like my NGC 7000, you would have a nice green cast. Love it. Always going to try to use the sun. It's free, guys. If you can, if you can, if I can save you money, don't spend $300 on a light box unless you're rich. I'm not. I'm poor. So, so here we go. Let's work on this now. Uh, I'm gonna let's do the very same thing. We're gonna extract, extract. <clears throat> we're gonna fit. We're gonna recombine, and then you know that after we've done that, the step you actually once you've done this, technically you go back a few steps. What's that? Crop. Crop. You want to crop it because there's always this horrible stacking. If you're heavy dither, I, I don't mean horrible stacking. It's great stacking. It's great integration. All the stars are perfectly lined up. What I meant to say is the frames are offset because of heavy dithering. The dithering removes the hot pixels because they're not one on top of each other. And so it offsets them. They completely disappear. And I did that one day by taking a picture of the highway and I had a whole bunch of cars go by and trucks and trucks with trailers. And it's about a mile away. And, and so I took about 10 frames and... I said to Pink Sis, like, look, can you stack these together? You know, don't bother with the stars. If there's no stars, there's cars and buildings and stuff and, and some turbines. You know what I noticed? After I stacked the eight truck car tractors, the cars disappeared. The trucks were gone. How can that be? I mean, it's stacked. It shouldn't it be like a truck, a car, another car, another truck, another truck. Shouldn't all the stacking, the integration cause all the vehicles to show up? No, it took all the frames, and as one went on top of the other, which went on top of the other, which un which ended up on top of each other eight times, and in some stacking stars, it's 100 times, the, the vehicles disappeared. I'm like, wow, I just learned something about when you're integrating stacking uh, 20, 30, 40 frames, those hot pixels that, that don't move, that would stay one on top of each other if you did not use dithering because now I might have lost you. I was talking about dithering and shifting frames over like the cars and trucks were going by at 30, 40 miles an hour. They weren't standing still. So if you shift a frame over, and now we're way off the subject, uh, it eliminates those hot pixels to a big degree. Let's keep going. So let's, this will go, hopefully I can go a little bit faster. 
let's extract these three channels. Okay, there's nothing here to add. It's just drag and drop, dead center. Thank you. Minimize, minimize. Now, let's look at this for a second. This is a red cast. It's not green. So what are we going to do? Like some people say, well, that worked fine. Thank you for your illustration on the green, but mine's not green. It's purple or it's another color. So then you have to kind of, mm, do I experiment a bit? You could, but let's go back to the red and let's open up. I'm just going to have a look at curves and track the view. And notice that the blue is milder and the red's really bright and the green's kind of in the center. So again, should we not use the blue? Sure, why not? If anything goes wrong, you can drop back one frame and go to the the green and drop the green on what? Red and blue. If I choose the blue, I will drop it on what? Red, green. Let's do it. Let's close this and minimize that. And because we're attempting to correct the orange red, we use linear fit. And our histogram on the curves showed that Blue was a lighter channel. So let's go down to B, blue. Okay. Now, where's our blue channel? Right here. Minimize it out of the way. Up. Okay. Now go to red, which is, which is the culprit. Triangle down. Okay. That should either go black or, or go whiter. Depends. Whatever. Pick some, there we go. And so nuke it. Back to normal. Green now will be a corrected by the blue which it says blue up here see what happens nuke it just to re to readjust the curves and now we can minimize linear fit bring back blue that was our pr preference reference frame so we've extracted we've linearized a color to adjust the other two let's recombine these as a single frame for m13 so again you should always sit reset because it could be a different target so let's go see oh it picks up red auto g auto b auto we're done don't triangle it don't square it apply global to all three of these little frames and hopefully we get a single recolored recalibrated nah, don't use calibration that's a different subject um recombine nuke it Perfect. So uh, that night I had some gradient, kind of a little bit green there to the side, a little bit purple on that side. Happens to almost every frame I do out in the backyard. It's full of lights and who knows. The moon might have been out. Probably was actually a full moon. So, okay. So minimize your linear, sorry, your combination and get rid of the blue and the R and the green because we don't need them. They were just served a purpose. Here we go. Now you, now you can say to yourself, well, okay, I've corrected the heavy orange and that's very important. Now, remember I said, I might have to go back to EBE for some reason. Well, we have, this is what those modules actually do. DBE, D, dynamic background extraction is for, to dynamically extract gradients and other things like that. And of course, automatic is automatic and you want to correct it using subtraction. But at this point, if I zoom in, which I can't, but now I can, if I zoom over here, there's a, a difference in color. Why? Because all these frames were shifting over as I was dithering heavily. So guys, you know what to do, right? Crop. Just a little bit, right where the frames start. And this was really bad on that night. So I'll move it over till I can see where the edge, right about there. And a little bit off the bottom, a little bit off that side. Whoops, you have to grab the side, otherwise that won't work. Bring it back again make sure you look back look behind so you can see i can see where my frames stop where they're properly aligned a little bit on the bottom a little bit on the side you can do this if you want and have a quick look and of course green check should shrink it okay i look at the edges they're nice and clean do not continue with your process if you don't have clean edges from offset integration stacking because we, that's going to, Pixinsta is going to take that into consideration when it starts to adjust the colors and all kinds of other things. So don't do that. All right. <clears throat> now I'm going to switch over. I think on window three, I have the finished product. Let me just go see if it's there. There it is. This is the, this is the finished M13 that 
hopefully we will be able to accomplish in the next 10 minutes this could be a long video so that's very very nice look at the colors of the stars uh all from linear fit channel combination channel extraction dbe uh, a little bit of oh and i did not I did not take any noise out of here. I did not even use a CDNR. I did not use multi-scale transforms. I didn't even denoise this image because it's a globular cluster. The background was fairly nice. Look at this. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i zooming in here. It's very, very smooth. What do you think caused that? Well, I came to the conclusion that what was causing this is on window one is that this here, this linear fit extraction combination gave me a very soft image and not rip bit out of just tear the image up from the db now some people may say well the reason that happened is because uh you don't have enough frames and you didn't average out all the noise and maybe your gain was too high perhaps i won't argue with these people all i'm saying is if you guys do what i just did in your video try with your target do what i did i would expect you'll get a very nice image where'd you go um when it's time to do the full processing and i think it's pretty and the colors are awesome let's keep going so we have a mess here we have a mess of gradient what are we going to do how are we going to get rid of this and keep in mind that whenever you make a decision to go let's say we'll use abe and let's say we will subtract if you don't like it then go to undo and switch over to dynamic background extraction nobody said you well i'm stuck now i went forward and i can't go back you can always go back again this is for beginners so let's uh, let's try to subtract this gradient now let's see what pix insight can give us as a reward so let's move the new because we don't want to see the new just yet we want to see what was extracted there's the green uh, look move over a bit there it is right here and there's the purple here i'm using the window as a cursor by the star big star here purple green purple green and beautiful job gotta love this program close it off bring it back up let's look at our new product not expecting perfection oh it's it's a big difference it's way way better uh and just because it was really heavy here so discard the back because that's the old one and now at this point i stop right off right here i stop if something happens and it crashed the other day big since i crashed m13 underscore drc6 for rich nikretje it's an altair astro 183 color so i rename it right away and i save it immediately save as xisf um you can i put a uh, uh, oh, it's the wrong folder actually i'm just gonna i'm just gonna create a real fast folder here. i think it's m13 okay so double click on your 13 and save as immediately and it's going to be a 32 bit 754 floating point good now um this image is large this is 5000 by almost 3600 so what i would like you guys to do you don't have to don't do it i do but let's say your computer's not that fast and you need to resample the image resampling is going to do two things yes it's going to turn it from 5400 to 3600 because it's 20 megapixel chip on my cmos camera and that's way too big to work with and it really slows down the computer but if i drop down to 2800 that's still a huge image i mean that's 10 meg so you can still work and not damage it so here's what i chose percentage 50 50 50 that's width and height drag drop okay now resize it there you go it's half the size not necessarily half its um uh <clears throat> quality yes it is but again what happened here and i just learned this is that the the resizing module the resampling module i call the resize but it's not resize it's resample when you shrink something from 5000 to 3 you're actually reducing noise because the pixels are shifting over to make it smaller keep that in mind experiment love it all right back to a regular size and now we've cropped we've removed a lot of this cast now at this point some people go well i'm going to take it one step further and i'm going to run dynamic background extraction even if i've already run abe i better get to it here it's going to take two hours and make some changes tolerance i'll give you my numbers it almost works for almost every image O nine hundred, O four hundred. you'll probably not see my cursor but for tolerance it's O nine hundred, 
minimum weight O400. I want four samples on one side and four on the other, which gives you eight altogether. And the size is two. Now, two makes it really, really, really tiny. I don't mind eight, 10. And if it's barely any stars, I'll even go bigger. I'll even go like 15 and I'll resize them. And look how big they are. Why would you want to resize it? Well, if there's like lots of big openings, you don't have, you won't, Pix Insight will not hit stars. So to me, if I look at this, maybe eight, 15 is too big. Let's drop down to 10. All you have to do is hit resize. They're a little smaller. Notice it didn't put any in the corners here because anything that's light, white, is an error. So if you can add one by clicking there and it's green, good. But if you put one <clears throat> here, then what's going to happen is Pixel Size is not going to like that. And it should actually, it's actually red. You can't see it there, but this is actually a red. So if it's highlighted, hit Dell. Let's go back. Whenever there's a red square, Pixel Size goes, I can't. See, here's a red one. You cannot choose. Here's what happens. I'll show you the picture. See this black? Now watch it change as I move away to where it's colored. Here's another one. See the star here, the black star in this little box right here? Move it away from the cluster. Grab this one. See the black? Pull it away until you see a nice RGB in this selected sample. Again, pull it away from your target. Scroll down. Pull it away. I'll always find an opened area where there's no stars. Pull away. Now, at this point, I will add maybe one here. I'll keep scrolling. I'll add one here. Here, I, like to, I really like to hit the outside edges. Again, pull away from the target. Keep going. This is going to be a long video. Probably two gig. And okay, pull away. Do not let any of these squares touch any stars. Here, there's a star here. Look at this one. Let me click it. Look at the star in the center here. Pixel Insight does not like that. It automatically should have avoided it, but it doesn't. And I think I showed you in the other video. Please do this manually. Move. Uh, I'm going to keep going and, and not waste so much time because this is going to it's going to take okay, I double clicked it, so I got another one. Okay, let's do this. Resize. Have a quick look. M13 is free. Go up. Close the upper window. Drag and drop. And if I forgot to select subtraction, I would I would not get a second window. It would not create a new window, but I want a new window. So here's it says background. Nuke it. There you go. Didn't touch nebula. Took out all kinds of other uh, color gradient if you wish. Down. We don't need that one. We want to see the second one. Okay, it's a lot better, but it is it again. It it hurts the image a lot when you pull hard on removing gradients. But there's no choice. Guess what though? It won't show up later. It will not show up because this is a like a, a hundred or a thousand percent stretch. So, oops, sorry about that. All right. So, are we done with this one? Kinda, because this is the old one. Yeah, and this is the new one. And again, um, we're just going to hit the uh, stream transfer function, and that's good. File, save. I don't want this to crash. Overwrite the original file, or maybe not. Maybe I'll keep an old copy and a newer copy because I may want to go back in time. Yeah. So let's keep going. I'll just see what the next step is here. So we uh, did everything. We need one to do. We need to do one more thing in our steps, and I've showed you. Let's scroll up, up. Scroll up. Select new preview. Make one. Don't grab any stars if you can. It's okay to have one or two, but don't grab a whole bunch. That's going to be the background. Now let's create a second preview right here. I'm going to hover for a second. New. Grab just the white stars. Let's have a look. Stars. Background. Total. Zoom out a little bit. Let's go to just background neutralization. Double click. Reference, it's number one or preview number one. So I'm going to make sure. Yeah, sometimes there's like six or seven files because I have all kinds of things open in other windows. Picks and size sees across all windows. One, select. This is the background only. Grab the triangle, drag and drop. And already I saw a huge difference. It went a lot brighter and cleaner. Close it. Color calibration. You guys have already seen all these videos, so I'm not going to waste a whole whack of time talking about all this. Let's just do it. So again, what's the white reference? Preview number two. Open. Back to the background number one. Some people don't even bother with one because it's already been done. Sometimes they do it twice. And don't forget, detect structure, stars, or otherwise it might be a problem. So drag and drop. 
Let's see if it uh, adjusts the color of M13. Okay, that didn't work. Hmm. What's going on here? Uh, let's apply global. Okay, what am I forgetting? Uh, one, two. Or maybe it did it and I didn't notice it. Let me just go up here. Let's see, it doesn't see. Um, under color calibration. Oh, it did do it. Let's do it again because I did, I did it twice. Okay, let's check again. Background. Okay. So, wow, that was really, really mild. So, I'm going to drag it because I undid. I'm going to redo. Close it. Remove the preview. Select the next preview because it has to be green to be removed a little. Or you, some people just right click here and go delete the preview. So back to my original image. Now that we've color calibrated, we've resized it, we've neutralized the background, we were able to put it all together. Let's do a stretch. Now I'm not going to denoise this. Uh, you already you guys know how to do this, or you can watch the video on part one to part twelve. But I'm just going to untransfer function it. And uh, notice there's only one star left. Which is interesting when PixInsight goes to stack these, it says no image found, image empty, unable to integrate. We'll talk about that later. Because um, some people have had this and they contact me. So we're going to stretch this manually. We're going to go to levels. We're going to select 183CDBE. It says in the top here, it says it here. Track the view. You need to track it as you stretch and open up a little preview using this little donut circle on the bottom and stretch your window just a tad. There you go. So grab your arrow first. Let me sure, make sure that these top numbers are back to zero. Come on, zero, 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 zero. zero. Oops, going the wrong way. Okay. And make sure tracks use good. And we're going to now, we're going to get out of the linear stage where everything is buried beneath and we're going to bring it to non-linear and we're going to stretch it and there she is she's starting to come out hit the square reset get the midpoint pull it up again see how the histogram is really pulling at the top perfect hit it with the square reset let's look at the background doing good looking good look at those beautiful stars in the background at the third pull because i'm keeping my eye on the, uh, now this is gonna, I'm gonna have some friends coming into the video. Um, at the third stage, don't pull too hard or bring out all that horrible stuff in the background and roll your mouse and maybe pull down on the background a bit. Again, before, after, before, after, before. It's a little circle on the very top left here. I wanna see my before and after. So this was before, now that's after. And I can scroll back out a bit. You have to highlight the, the window if you want to scroll. So make it small again. And if you want, you can pull it a third time. Always reset at the very, very bottom. And I'm going to overdo it on purpose. See, you don't want that. You want to pull it nice and soft so the galaxies, not the galaxy, the nebula. Oh, yes, there is a tiny little galaxy right there. So I don't like pulling my targets hard. Okay, so close the preview. If you want, you can reset this. Drag, drop, watch M13. Bingo. That's it. That's all you want. That's it. So now we have a nicely stretched image. Not too hard. Didn't burn out the core. And I'm going to close this. I'm running out of time. And what can we do from here? This is stretched now. If you try to unstretch it, it won't. <laughs> so that's good. At this point, normally you would create a mask. And you go through extract channel. And you stretch it. And you drop it. And you start working on it. And I'm going to, sh I'm going to try something. We're going to create a mask without creating a mask the old-fashioned way, which is up here by extraction. I'm going to grab this tab. I'm going to drag it over here, create a clone. Poof. There's a clone. And make sure these are both the same size. And it doesn't really matter. It doesn't care. But they are. See this clone? Grab the tab, drag it on the side, let it go. Minimize. What just happened? Well, look, we have a mask. The background's protected. Only the stars are showing. If I go Control K, 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 awesome. Now if I go Control Shift I, now the now the background is vulnerable to noise reduction, and the stars are not. So 
I, 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 I. And if you're saying, what are you doing with this I, I thing? Well, all I'm doing is mask, invert. Mask, invert. And then there's mask, show. Don't show the mask. Mask, show the mask. This is just control K, K, K. So K, now we know the mask is on, and now it's not. If the tab is brown, if the tab is brown, you are masked. And of course, I'd like to go K to make sure that the, the stars are white, and I'm actually protecting the background, because I'm going to do a little bit of... A little bit of something real quick to show you a little trick um, okay so I'm gonna grab a little preview grab M13 switch over here make it a little bit bigger oh there is a big drop in resolution when you go from 5,000 to 3 depends on your camera if you don't want to drop resample if you don't want to go 50 go 80% just make it a little bit smaller or leave it full version don't touch anything I'm gonna just open this and sometimes these stars are burned out I'm gonna try HDR for the simple purpose, and it's just be a test, I can always undo it, of not making these, the core, burned out. So I'm going to try s number of layer six. Drag and drop. It went brighter. So go a little blue arrow on the top here. Undo. Let's try five. Remember, you always experiment. Drop it. Oh, wow. Now there's separation between each star. I like it. I love it. I don't want to even go to four. Drag, drop. The core just got the big brightness is gone and I can see individual cracks in between that's all we want to do so guess what that is very nice and bring your window back one last step this is a nebula so there's not going to be two hours or four hours of, of, of there could be but it's just a nebula it's just a globular cluster not a nebula so what's my last step before I show my friends I go to curves I select preview um, let me just check and see. Yeah, the preview is still there. So drop down menu, preview one. Okay, let's shrink it a bit. If I can, I guess I can't. Uh, just bring it down a bit. There we go. And go far, far over to S for saturate. Grab the bottom quarter and pull. Pull. Before. Yeah, my computer does that. Computer does that, and I don't know why. Before, after, before, after. Before, the stars are all white. After, they're a nice yellow blue. Now, what you can do, drag it. Look at your stars. Now, it did it a second time. Now the stars are yellow and white and blue. Again, undo, redo. So you didn't, I didn't realize a while back that you can, you can drag and drop 10 times if you want to destroy your images but or way over this is way oversaturated so again before because this is now a third time some people love it when their stars are just crazy colors undo uh, sorry not undo but um close the little t the little window so this can be undone and i'm going to reopen this one more time i'm going to did you know you could create a preview on the fly well there it is and you can drop down and go preview one. There it is. And now I'm going to go to RGB because this is a color. And this is my preview. Watch what I can do. Darken it. I can brighten it. Brighten the core. Darken the... So just put this where you like it. Or you can make this brighter. Make this darker. It causes more separation. See how it changes? Enjoy it. Do what you want with it. Make it the way you like it. There. Right about there for me close drag and drop just very subtle that's it I'm done I'm done all right so there it is there's wow almost an hour um I was concerned about time so remove this now is this perfect by no means but it got us somewhere and by you guys experimenting a little bit more you'll probably remove some noise throw in an extra two three modules and enjoy it I could have went unsharp mask I could have did local histogram equalization uh, lots of different things, but that's not the purpose. The purpose was just to talk about linear, extract, combo. So there's my globular. Here it is again. I put a little bit more time in that one. From window 1 to window 3. Back to 1. Back to 3. You can tell 3 so much more. Just beautiful. The stars are pinprick. The VRC6, which is a Malincam video 
Rich Necretchen 6 is a great scope. If the collimation is bang on, wow, it's a beautiful scope. Anyways, um, I no longer have a mount. So before I close, I'm, gonna sh I'm just going to stop it here. This is part one of the intermediate series, and there was a lot to learn here. It took me three, four weeks because I'm slow uh, to get this down pat. Um, what did we learn? We learned that you can take a big red cast, check your color, just follow my steps closely. You'll, you'll have fun. Um, and you can make a nice image um, without having to destroy it. I'm just looking for something else right now that I can show you because I shouldn't have closed. Oh, there's a way to do it. So I can't remember where my files are. So how about I go open recent file and look for NGC 7000. That's what I want to show you guys. Remember this? Well, we went from this to something way, way better with very few steps and I, I, I just call it 50% improvement, 100% improvement in terms of linearity and pixel distribution and not destroying it with e, A, B, E, D, B, E. Yes, I did use it afterwards, but lightly, just enough to clear the gradient, but not as a remover of the green cast close. So, and don't forget, see how it's still brown? Mask, remove mask. In this case, remove mask, cast, the mask is gone. What would I do now? I would do file save as a TIFF. If I want, or how about a JPEG, M13 JPEG? Yes, and 100 percent quality. Yes, I can send that to any of my friends right now, and they'll go, "Well, that's cool," and blah blah blah. So before, <laughs> before I shut this down, I want I want to go back and remember the very beginning. I talked about the AVX being busted. Um, I want to share something with you guys since I've been up, off for a bit, haven't been here in like three four weeks because I had a lot a lot of things to do. Um, even though I'm not working, I am on disability. I'm struggling financially, so my son helped me out a little bit. Um, that's not your problem. I'm just mentioning things. What I want to talk about, something exciting, is I have a new website. Let's bring it up. So here it is at rcfmitch.wixsite. I will put the link down below. Dot com, Altair hyphen, not underscore, support. So why why did I do this? So many people are asking, "Hey Mitch, um, you know, can you have a can we go to your website?" Well, I don't have one. I have Flickr. Oh, oh well, you should make a website, man. <laughs> and you know, so here, uh, let's just go through it real quick. So technical help, astrophotography, hardware and software support. Sure. So I have a little picture of uh, some PixInsight things I've done. Uh, Need help with PixInsight? See my online YouTube videos that will link to part 1 to 12 and hopefully later on a second button to intermediate. And I have a picture here of um, NGC891. Now I was chosen by skynews.ca. Let's go to the link. I want to share this with my, you guys are awesome as uh, my subscribers. I'm just a few short of 500, you know. I know Trevor... Astro Backyard has 16,000. Good for him. He's a vid, he's a very good uh, uh, photographer, as, uh, videographer. His 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 videos are amazing, like like Hollywood. Um. Anyways, so NGC 891 Andromeda's Other Galaxy by me, Mitch Arsenault. Photo of the week for 2018, January 5th. As you can see here, 891. So incredible, crazy detail. I mean, ah, I didn't do it. The the C8 did, and by Hypercam. Uh, so you can, guys can read this up a little bit. All it says is, uh, use a C8 F6.3, the Celestron El Cheapo reducer, which is all I can afford. My Hypercam 183, 30 second subs 300 times to, con to combine this final image. So that's it. So you guys can check that out. Close that, back to my website. So I have uh, Altar Astro 183 color and mono. I have both cameras. And I, have, I support these cameras. I have people that are... That I have students, I call them students, friends, students. I give lessons online, one-on-one -on -one using Team Viewer 13. And I have people in Britain, like I mentioned earlier, I have people in the United States, I have people across Canada, um, here in Ontario, British Columbia, Wisconsin, Georgia, the UK. And so I help them one-on-one -on -one and they support me uh, by donations or one-time fee of tw whatever, $25 US. But I had to do this because I, I'm just... I need to make a little bit of money somehow to keep me going with my gear or time is money. I have a family of three and I, I don't work. Uh, so I, it wasn't even me. It was another one of my students goes, Mitch, put it, put, get online and you got knowledge and you're not just a PixInsight guy. You can, you've got, you can set up 
well, all kinds of different things. So I, I put a couple links. Contact me if you have a question. Name, email, message, send. I have the donut, a PayPal. If you click here, it's always going to go to my PayPal. Thank you for your support. If you have a quick question, make a donation. Kind of rhymes. Um, that would really, really, really help me. Probably to fix my mount too. It's going to be quite a bit expensive. Uh, I have services. Under services, I have... Uh, APT support for those who have APT and they can't get plate solving working. Little things that can help out. So real quick, PixInsight, you guys know that. SharpCap Professional, I've used it for months and months and months. It's great. There's a brain sensor analysis. You can get your gain offset, all kinds of things. I can help you with that. Again, small donation. APT353, now there's now 3.54.1. I can help you solve there. Sequence Generator Pro, very complicated program. I've helped dozens of people. No, maybe not dozens, but uh, quite a few. And they're super happy now. They plate solve within 10 seconds. All the things I've dealt with in the past... Uh, 10 years, Nebulosity 3.4, Deep Sky Stacker. I use it sometimes. PIP for planets, Registax for planets, and the moon. Backyard EOS, used it for, well, since it came out, version 3.9 now. Uh, being a long-time DSLR user, I have some insight. Please contact me. I can help you with your DSLR. And then you can use those pictures, CR2, throw them in Pix Insight. Quickly, contact. Basically, just uh, send me an email. Testimonials. I have a bunch of people that have said some really nice things. Uh, I think you might have seen this. Um... Uh, possibly the most underrated video on YouTube. Thank you. I cannot accept that kind of honor. Uh, I have a nice tutorial from one of my friends here in Georgia. Just incredible. You know, we all have, we all struggle. We all spend a ton of money and we don't have any, barely anything to show for results. Now we do. Um, also, there's my, I've been published in, once in the UK. I was published in Canada, once in the UK, Sky, uh, Sky News Magazine, I think it is. A couple of others. Um, and then my gallery, which is coming soon. Um, there's a Sky News link. There's my Galaxy and my gear. And finally, about me. I'm not even going to tell you about me. I want you to read it. So back to home. So this is it. It's a technical support, make donation. There's all, one of them has a one, I think one of the link goes to one-time fee. Uh, and you get an hour. It's $25 per full hour. If you're not satisfied, fine. I'll give you back your money. I, I'm trying to help people. I love this hobby to death. And I've, you know, I've been at this since 1980. One eighty-two with film um, cameras. We guided with our eyes stuck to the eyepiece at minus forty, and our eye eyelids stuck to the eyepiece. And we had a hand controller only does north, south, east, west. And oh, what a disaster it was! And look at us now. We push buttons and go to sleep. And the next morning, boop, it's all done. So please subscribe. Thank you for everything. I really hope that this was fun and you learned a ton. And I'm gonna do part two. No spoiler because I'm not exactly sure. I got a couple of things I got up my sleeve. Um, Thank you for supporting me at YouTube. Uh, share it with everybody. Um, you know, um, just just keep at it. If you have questions and people contact me, I like I said, I've been doing one-on-one -on -one now for the last three, four months, uh, and people have actually been donating uh, some 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 amounts. Have been helping me a lot, and uh, continue that. I, I don't have a mount anymore. That's it. I'm done for the mount. No more. I can't bring any new new i can't bring, bring any more astrophotos to work on so i'll just use old data until we solve this avx problem uh, that's that's it so thanks everybody just going to close off with this make sure that i don't hit the delete button or i can't start this over it's been over an hour all right don't forget to subside and 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 click on the little bell so you get lots more updates and share this with everybody see you on the flip side